Kathy Wood just made a bombshell statement. Kathy Wood literally just spoke on CNBC and she actually said that she believes, or at least she thinks, that the United States is already in a recession. And so in this video, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about her thoughts, talk about a little bit of what I'm saying, and also all of the other people who have also predicted uh, that the U.S. will go into a recession. And so let's just go ahead and get right into this video. So Kathy Wood went on and said that the U.S. is probably already in a recession. She cited two reasons as to why this might be happening. She said supply chains, which is something that she personally did not expect in her firm. And she also cited the Russia invasion of Ukraine as another reason as to why she believes that the U.S. is already in a recession. She thinks that those two factors have basically pushed the U.S. into a recession, and she believes that we are in one right now. Now, for those who don't know, we do get the quarter over quarter GDP reading uh, this week, and then we actually find out for sure if we are in a recession next month when we get the Q2 uh, GDP reading. So that'll be something that you're definitely going to want to pay attention to. Now, I want to go ahead and touch on something else. I want to go over some of the people in banks who have basically predicted a recession or said that a recession is coming, whether it be this year or next year. So let's just go ahead and get over it. Uh, Ken Langon, who is a uh, legendary uh, investor, actually said that he believes that the U.S. is already in a recession. He actually came out on CNBC yesterday and actually said this. Uh, Peter Schiff, you guys know him. That's the gold guy. That's the mega bear, the guy that basically says the market is going to crash every year. Uh, Peter Schiff also believes that the U.S. is already in a recession right now. Uh, you have Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank in April became the number one first major investment bank to argue or basically uh, hypothesize that the U.S. would fall into a recession by 2023. You also have the Federal National Mortgage Association, a.k.a. Fannie Mae. Most of you guys know them. Uh, they argued that the U.S. is heading for a recession by the second half of next year. Now, back in May, CNBC actually did a survey and found that 81% of all adults that they surveyed said that they think that the U.S. economy is likely to experience a recession this year. So it's not just Kathy Wood who feels that way. It's not just some of these banks and legendary investors. Consumers actually feel that way. And I'm sure you guys know this because Michigan actually had this consumer sentiment thing that came out and it had the lowest reading that it's ever had since the dang consumer sentiment uh, reading was created back in like the 70s or something like that a very long time ago so even the american consumer the average american the regular person walking around working going to the grocery store actually feels like we're in a recession right now so that's something that you definitely want to understand and so now where are we well a rising number of financial experts say that the u.s is heading into a recession which for those who don't know is defined by two sequential quarters with a significant decline in economic activity or gdp that's what it's known as and so why does this matter well so recessions are historically marked by widespread layoffs. Uh, you have bankruptcies. You've got higher bar borrowing costs. And then you also have tons and tons of pain in the stock market, which you guys are no stranger to. If you've been in the stock market at any time in 2022, it's been an absolute bloodbath, right? And so if the Federal Reserve continues to raise rates in order to clamp down inflation, which I would argue they don't have a choice, they have to. We will see uh, an increase in borrowing costs. Uh, this is going to be for mortgages, your car loans, business loans. You will see an increase. So even if you qualify uh, for the loan or your credit card or whatever you're getting, the interest rate will automatically be higher than it was in the prior year. And this is because uh, the Fed is raising interest rates. Now, we're actually already seeing this in the housing market. Now, it has become very clear, at least in my opinion, that the Fed is literally trying to kill the housing market. Like they're literally trying to do that. And it's become extremely clear because because if you look at the housing market, the average rate on a 30 year uh, fixed mortgage is like five point like eight percent. Like it's actually really close to six percent. This is the highest level since 2009. You guys know what happened in 2009. Not saying that it'll happen now, but you guys know what happened in 2008 and 2009. And so. This whole recession uh, conversation is very interesting. Keep in mind, we will find out very soon. We actually find out next month if we are officially uh, in a recession or not. And so, like I said, I've been telling you guys what I'm personally doing because a lot of people will ask the question, well, what should I do with my stock? Should I panic sell? Should I liquidate? You never want to get into a period where the volatility is bothering you so much that you start panicking. You end up selling your stocks. You know, the stock market's like literally the most resilient thing out there. Like it always bounces back. It will bounce back. Now, if you're in a bunch of crap, if you're in a bunch of YouTube stocks, then yes 
yes, those are probably not going to bounce back. But if you own the S&P 500, you own a good, solid, quality company that can weather the storm or do well in this type of environment. For example, in my opinion, like a McDonald's, a Starbucks, you know, those are the type of companies that I think will actually fare well uh, in a recession. Because regardless of what's happening, people are going to eat like crap and people are going to buy coffee, you know. So just just stocks like that. As long as you're positioned correctly and you're buying good quality things, uh, I actually think you'll be fine in the long term. Yes, they'll be paying. Yes, you will see a lot of red in your portfolio. But I think over the long term, uh, your stocks and your investments will be okay. Now, this brings us to the question of crypto. How will this recession affect crypto prices? Well, to be honest with you guys, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But to be honest with you, I think it could actually have a more negative impact on uh, crypto more than stocks. The reason why is because in crypto, especially with these exchanges, you are starting to see liquidity issues. And if crypto continues to tank and go lower, those uh, liquidity issues are going to continue to accelerate. And that could be extremely risky, extremely dangerous and extremely bad for investors and their money. So. Still bullish on crypto, still like crypto, have no issue with crypto, but I just want to make it very clear that stocks is safer, at least if you're investing in the right ones, is safer uh, than cryptocurrencies in this environment. Like I said, uh, if you want to go to safe route, you can own something like a McDonald's or a Starbucks, you know, as opposed to maybe like a Bitcoin or Ethereum. Now, I'm not saying to sell it if that's what you have or anything like that. I'm just trying to explain to you guys the different risks, right? Like if I'm weighing Bitcoin and Ethereum versus uh, two stocks that are pretty much recession proof, in my opinion, I'd rather have the stocks that are recession proof so uh, there you guys have it. That'll go and conclude today's video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.